All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Shu Heng, the uh, first year PhD student from UC San Diego. And uh, the work we're going to introduce is how few debits improve on Godless. Uh, federal Learning in Resource Skilled Edge Computing Environments. This work is collaborated with uh, Jia Yun Zhang and the folks from UT San Diego and directed by Professor Rajit Gupta and Professor Jin Boshang. And I'm sorry for the bad taste of the first author. She wants to put all the faces here in the first slides. Okay, so the motivation of our work is that when people and organizations are interacting with digital systems in distributed environments, there actually exists an omnipresent of heterogeneity. So such kind of heterogeneity actually comes from two sources. The first is the devices. The devices are different in terms of their types and manufacturers, and accordingly, their computing resources and storage are different. And the second is the data. When users are interacting with the data, that will show a content preference that is user-specific. So it means that essentially the data is different uh, in terms of their distribution. So such kind of heterogeneity further emphasizes the privacy concerns that uh, nowadays people are more aware of that uh, privacy issue because neural network models are really powerful to reveal user contexts using this user data. So people are not really willing to share their data to other parties. That's why federal learning is emerged to deal with this problem. So basically, federal learning is just like uh, it allows multiple parties to jointly train a neural network model in these distributed environments without data sharing. Uh, it has a lot of applications in the domain of healthcare, mobile computing, and smart homes, where the data is just the privacy to the to the users, and they can train the neural neural network model with this federal learning framework. And different from prior works, uh, our work is actually uh, focusing on a very practical uh, scenario. That is a system heterogeneity scenario with resource skewness. So I will explain it in details. Uh, in general, we are considering like two types of uh, device uh, heterogeneity. The first is like uh, there's some strong devices that might be something owned by the company. It has great computing resources, like the server on the cloud with great GPUs. There are also some big devices, like the user on mobile or WebSense devices with a little uh, memory and computing ability. And the resource skewness environment we are talking about is that here we have just a few, like one or two strong devices, and accompanied with uh, hundreds of weak devices. As depicted in this chart, it shows the like the comparison between the strong and weak devices. Uh, in terms of the data set amount, uh, the strong devices usually obtain the substantial amount of data that uh, usually is, um, uh, is, good, is good enough for training their models. But for the weak devices, they are only a small amount of data that's also usually personalized. And we sum up, if we sum up the total number of amount of data for the weak devices, uh, we can see that uh, it can actually be a very good uh, supplement to the uh, strong device. So this kind of environment actually captures a practical environment that's a scenario that uh, a single company may want to train their own machine learning models and uh, using the data collected by their own laboratory and also the data uh, created by the users, but the user do not want to share the data, so they are using the federated learning to deal with the problem. And of course, there are some existing methods that deal with this uh, problem, and uh, by uh, here, uh, deploy the large model, neural network model for the strong devices, and then downscale the large model to fit the device capacities of the weak devices. And basically, uh, the the way that is downscale them is just simple. The first is steps by scaling. It's just like shrinking the number of layers of the large model. And the second one is by, step, by scaling. So scaling the number of hidden states here. And then the model just identify and aggregate the common parts by weight averaging. Uh, that's quite simple, but of course the problem is, uh, the, the performance is not very good because of two reasons. So the first one is that uh, there are some unshared parts, like these gray neurons. Uh, they are not shared from the small models. So they rarely get updates from that and didn't get much of the benefits from the small models. And another problem is that uh, 
the functions of layers and neurons are usually misaligned with just naive, simple sharing. Because uh, for this small model, probably the first layer functions for, to, to, to express to extract the features and to uh, conduct hidden pattern learning. But for the large model, since it has more uh, layers, it may just separate the functions to the uh, of the feature extraction and the hidden pattern learning. So that's also called the cause the large model to not get much of the benefits from the uh, small models. So here, this image, uh, this figure just uh, is a visualization of the pipeline of the baseline models that we are comparing with. And uh, here are two important baseline models. Uh, so for the all small, it's like uh, training, uh, training only small models on all the devices, including the weak device and the strong device. And uh, the blue one is the, called exclusive FL. So it means that the strong devices run the large models and the weak devices run the small models and there's no uh, federal learning in between each other, but just federal learning within their group. And we can see that for the alt mode, we have a good performance for the weak devices, but for the strong devices, uh, since we do not have the strong models, large models, uh, the computational resource is not fully utilized. And for the exclusive, exclusive FL, the small models cannot get much of the data from the strong devices, making their performance not that good. And there are some of the baseline models that try to improve the performance of the weak devices, that is the David in the title, uh, but uh, they neglect like the strong device, that's the goalless. So uh, in that case, the company may not be really willing to join the federal learning system because they can already get a good performance. Joining a system will lower their performance. So that's why we propose this research question, can the strong devices benefit from the weak devices in these resource skilled environments? And the answer is yes, of course. Uh, and we propose to train a graph hyper network to generate weights for personalized client models. So such kind of the graph hyper network is agnostic to the model scaling strategy so that it can enable collaboration among arbitrary neural network models. So I will briefly introduce our method and uh, due to the time limits, uh, we can discuss the details later. So what is a graph hyper network? It is a neural network that generates model weights for another network. And the input of the graph hyper network is the computational graph of the network that we want to generate. And together with the uh, client ID of the client model in this federated learning setting. And it encoded with a gated GNN and uh, the graph, computational graph is represented as the topological uh, traverse of this uh, computational graph. And then use a memory decoder to get the model parameters and uh, communicate to the clients uh, that rep represented in this pink box. And in the client side, we actually just train it as usual, the federal learning settings. We get the data uh, and uh, the loss function and back propagate it to get the gradient of the target network. And then we further communicate the, gra the, the gradient of the target network to the, uh, to the central server. And then since it is generated by the graph hyper network, it can be further back propagated to update the uh, neural network parameters for the uh, graph hypernet. And that's basically the overview of the, how the federal learning is conducted in this, with the help of the graph hyper network. And uh, in addition, we also propose a knowledge transfer strategy to further enhance the performance of the weak devices. Uh, here for the strong devices to fully use of the computational resource uh, is actually we generate uh, and train both the small and large models on the strong devices. And we conduct a knowledge distillation from the large to the small models. And here we consider two uh, loss functions for the knowledge distillation. The first is a cross entropy loss that's like the small models to align the prediction probability of the large model. And another one is KL divergence loss, it aligns the feature space between the last small and large models. And it only happens when the last hidden layer uh, match with the size. So it won't be happening uh, during uh, when the model is uh, downscaled with uh, vice vice. 
So for the experiments, we conduct experiments on four data sets, including image and language classification with uh, one or two strong devices and a lot of weak devices. And for the data allocation, we're always allocating like 50% uh, of the data to the strong devices and the other 50 to the weak devices. But since we have hundreds of weak devices sometimes, and so each of the weak devices only have a uh, little of the data. And we try experiments on different uh, model structures and the ways of depth scaling and the scaling of the model to get the uh, uh, small model for the big device. And we shall note that for our model, uh, we can actually support architecture-wise uh, model scaling. But to make fair comparison with prior works, we are mainly experimenting on the depth scaling and weight scaling. And here is the main results of our proposed method received FL, and it can consistently outperform all the compared methods and improve the performance of for the both the strong and weak devices. And we also conduct other uh, experiments, including the setup of trying different uh, like uh, diverse uh, model structures. So previously we just have uh, one small and one large model. Now we have the small, medium, and large models with different architectures. Basically, we can not only have three, but uh, whatever we like of the number of uh, model structures, uh, because hypernetwork can just handle it uh, with its uh, graph, uh, like computational graph uh, modeling strategy. And we also conduct a prediction study experiment on the impact of the on the impact of the different resource running settings, like the data ratio and the number of strong and weak devices. Our model also shows the great performance. If, please check the paper for details. And uh, here's a summarization of our work and uh, the summarization of the performance of the methods. Uh, thank you for your attention. And I'd like to take questions. <laughs>